So it was the uh, International Association for the Study of Pain, um, and this was brought up by earlier speakers that pain is a subjective experience, no deception, and the emotional component to it. It's even harder if you, with an older, an adult, an adolescent, you will be communicate, able to communicate, so that they can at least tell you about their emotional experience, even though you might not be able to completely um, appreciate what their experience is like. In a small child, they are not even able to uh, tell you their emotional experience. So that's an additional problem that we have in children. Um, let me just, I'll see, I'm a little worried that the words don't come up. Um, so nociception, this was brought up earlier, the four sec parts that are part of nociception, the transcription, transmission, perception, and modulation. Children have this. All of this is there. Um, very early during the uh, prenatal life, these structures develop. The more tightly, the areas that are tightly innervated or that are um, your fingertips, around your mouth, that's where the earliest peripheral innervation starts. So by the seventh weeks uh, of, um, in the pre of prenatal life, you have already innervation in these structures. What is different <coughs> though is as the child progresses uh, through, from the first trimester into the second trimester of pregnancy, all these structures are formed. By the third, but not until the third trimester and towards birth, will the child have the capabilities, uh, the downward regulation, uh, modulation. So it is possible that a premature child born at, say, 10 weeks, 12 weeks premature, who has a needle stick, might have a more intense experience than some than a child or an adult later on because they do not have the downward regulation uh, and modulation at that time. So how do we, um, go, yes, so these are the uh, pain assessment. Uh, you have qualitative and quantitative assessments in clinical uh, practice. That's the question, how much does it hurt uh, in infants and non-communicative uh, children uh, you would look at the behavioral observational scales, and in other children we use self-report scales, just like in adults. The qualitative aspects of pain I will get to later on my chronic pain talk, that I spent a little bit t more time there. Um, as I said, we have some problems in children um, assessing their pain because it is very easy to say, um, you might be able in a four-year-old to say, what number do you give your pain? That's probably the earliest age. Some preschool children, <coughs> counting to five, maybe. But in, uh, you will not be able to <coughs> be able to get the rest of the story. Is this burning pain or dull pain? Is it uh, pain such as uh, with pins and needles? And when I said at a four-year-old level you could use these numbers, people have figured out, well, a four-year-old is clearly not as able to differentiate. They don't have in their mind the structure that one is less than four and maybe eight is more. That's sort of the school age. So other tools were required. And over the last 20 years, these tools have been uh, developed. And by now, there are a pretty significant number of behavioral observational pain scales. And these are some of the pain scales that I use. Some of them have been around for a little bit longer. Others uh, are more recent. Um, let's see. So a common one uh, is the neonatal infant pain scale. There's the Children's uh, Hospital of Eastern Ontario pain scale. Um, there is uh, the FLAC pain scale. And that's an acronym for face, leg, activity, crying, and consolability. These different pain scales have been validated for various age groups. So
So this is validated for uh, under one year of age, two months to seven years of age, and one to seven years. The flag is a 10-point pain scale. The NIPS is not a 10-point pain scale. And that becomes important when you deal uh, with, um, say, in an uh, academic medical setting, you would like to have a pain scale that's a 10-point pain scale because that's your numeric scale for the adult or for, that you might use in the older child. You don't want to go from a 7-point pain scale in your youngest population and then end up with a pain scale that's on a different grading system. So what does the flag look like? So this is the flag, um, and that's the one we use most commonly, and it's very widely used in the United States. And as you can say, face, leg, activity, cry, consolability. And uh, zero is no particular expression or smile, or frequent, constant quivering, chin, clenched jaws, and so forth. As you can see, this is observational. Now, do you know that this child is in pain? No, you're extrapolating that this child is in pain with that kind of behavior. This looks like painful behavior. Okay. Um, there are a couple problematic areas uh, in the flag pain scale, and those are children uh, with, that are non-communicative, children that are uh, not able to move very well, such as children with cerebral palsy, because if you have kicking activities that you are measuring these leg movements, then um, you would not see this in a child that has contractures, uh, such as a child with cerebral palsy. So you need a different uh, pain assessment tool. And uh, Chopa Malvia um, has, not too long ago, as you see it's in 2006, uh, modified revise the flat pain scale and uh, a cup. You will have to work with the parents to obtain some of this information. So activities, severe agitation, head banging, shivering, and so forth. Repeated outbursts, constant grunting. And that will give you a pain scale. Um, so this here um, are pain scales that are self-report measures. And the standard ones are just as in adults, the numeric pain scale or a visual analog scale. Surprising as it is, the numeric pain scale, we've used it for a long time, but it only has been validated within the last two years. Don't remember right now whether it was last year that it was published or the year before. So despite the fact that this has been around and we have used it in clinical practice, we weren't quite sure whether that was actually a tool appropriate for a pediatric age group. Colors can be associated, uh, I left it up here because very recently questions have again come up whether these colors are actually appropriate because not all people and of all cultures will rate severe pain as red. So, so these things that become very established and 10 years later may not be quite correct anymore. So this is always something you have to look at. All right, pediatric pain, uh, acute pain, 90% is acute pain that we see in an inpatient population, and chronic pain is less than 10%. Most of it is post-surgical pain. We have some uh, medical pain. And then in the palliative care, neuropathic pain, arthritis, that's less commonly seen, at least in an inpatient population. 